Today we're going to look at another antenna, um, this time Yagi Uda antenna, and we're going to use the same software that we use to optimize a dielectric resonator antenna, but this time to optimize this problem. The geometry of the problem can be seen here, and these are the again the parameters that we're going to look to uh, adjust to optimize the, the problem or, or find the best solution, the best design. So this um, one, this problem again it's we're going to adjust the geometry the bandwidth this time is going to be between 10 and 11 gigahertz and the objective is to minimize the reflection so s11 again so we're going to minimize the maximum uh, reflection in 10 and 11 gigahertz range um, this time it's subject to a constraint the, i know uh, dielectric resonator was subject to a geometrical constraint this time the constraint is going to be a design uh, specification constraint. So uh, this time it's the uh, design objective. It uh, says that the average gain should not be smaller than 6 in the frequency region of 10 to 11. This uh, 6 is going to come from uh, the simulation we'll see and it's actually in, in amplitude. So the, um, the, this is saying that the, the amplitude of uh, the gain, the mean gain, not be smaller than 6, uh, which is equal to 15.56 dB. And it's in the same range that we're looking to minimize as well. The uh, problem is expressed here in sort of a shortened term, giving us our parameters, giving us our objective, and this time we've got our constraints as well. So the gain constraint is something that we're going to look at in you, but everything else is the same as a dielectric resonator antenna. Load up the software. And um, I either create a project for YUA, but I do have a project just with the, the sort of the start starting points already selected, as we've seen those in the last video. So I'm just going to open that project. But if you were to start from fresh, then we we create a new project for uh, Yagi Uda. So I'm just going to open up the YUA project that I created earlier. Again, only one objective, um, and this time it's already I've already input the parameters. And these parameters have come from the problem that we saw uh, in the slides earlier and I've already input the uh, simulation settings as well uh, there's no real change there other than the timeout is greater because this time the um, simulation is going to take a bit longer so I put the timeout at a thousand seconds just to allow for um, the longest simulation and then a bit more a bit extra on top that will allow for a buffer just to note with these parameters this time there are no geometrical constraints as we saw in the problem there was no expression of any kind of uh, constraint on the geometry so we won't be using smart parameters and we won't be using the geometrical constraints in inside the uh, option here we won't be using these or these um, in a future video we will go through the geometrical constraints but for this video we're, we're not using anything uh, from this, these two options here so the first change um, with this one to uh, the, the last video is in build data set we're going to be using two files. The reason we're going to be using two files is because we had a uh, objective function based on S11 and we had a constraint which was based on gain. So because that gain doesn't come from the design itself, it comes from the simulation output of the design, it's some function of the design, we're going to have to get that externally uh, through CST. So first thing I'm going to do is, is name it, um, just selecting CST simulation again, find the file for the, the CST project that's going to simulate this particular antenna and then click simulate again. And uh, here we have all of our files which are output from the simulation. There's a few less this time. Um, and as I mentioned in the previous video, we will provide a, uh, a table of what these files are so that you can decide which ones you need to select for your particular problems. In this case, we need um, S11 to find the max of S11, and we need gain to find the, uh, the sort of mean gain within our uh, interested frequency range. The CST project that was provided for this, the port that we were looking to optimize has been named 2, port 2. So for this particular project, just because of that uh, change in the CST project, we're actually going to use um, D22 as the file, which is 
uh, S22 in, in decibels, but this we know that this is actually our S11, but just because we when we set up the project, uh, the port name, the port uh, number was just designated two for the port that we were looking at, that we actually uh, want it to be one. So select your S11 file and we need gain as well and the gain that we're going to use is this uh, gain IEEE but theta 0 pi 0 1. So you can see this time there are uh, two files on the right hand side so our response from the simulation is actually going to contain two, two bits of data rather than in the previous video we only had the one here so that's one significant change from this project to the last project. Once we have those files click save and we'll see the same message that we saw last time, which is that the uh, files are saved in our project directory here. So we can view them in our workspace and I'll show you them now. But first, don't forget to save uh, the data set in the software. Um, I, we saved the files, remember, but we haven't actually saved the data set yet. So we'll click save on that. So there we go. Let's remove that. So we can have a look at what these look like now. So again, we're going to have all of our uh, frequencies that were simulated and the uh, result from the simulation. The thing to note here, you can see that it goes from uh, 9.996 sorry, to 10.004. So we have no index for 10 gigahertz here. And if we scroll down, we'd see that there's actually, there isn't one for 11 either. This is just due to the simulation, obviously using a, a step in the frequency, which didn't allow for us to get our perfect 10 gigahertz and our perfect 11 gigahertz out. So I will show you in a minute how we're going to get this result at 10 gigahertz, so somewhere between these two. Um, and the fact that we have all of this data means that we can use uh, the, the methods that are available in the templates that we'll provide to get the value of 10, which is somewhere between those two there. And obviously some the result will be somewhere between those two there. So if I close that and I show you gain, although we have 10 and 11, we have nowhere near the kind of level of data that we had the obviously gain in this this case isn't uh, very sensitive so there's there's no need to have so many sort of points that, that have been simulated this is why we've ended up with, with this but we'll use um, the template file again and I'll show you how we're going to use the templates that are provided to get our detailed information between uh, our 10 and our 11 gigahertz range and then obviously we have our data set there which in this case is going to be two files instead of a dielectric resonator which was only the one file so we're going to look at the objective function um, the difference this time being that we as you remember when we saw the file for uh, d22 we didn't have our um, interested frequency we didn't have 10 or 11 gigahertz in that file we had something close, but we didn't quite have 10, we didn't quite have 11. And uh, so when we set the objective function, it's going to look very similar to when we did the dielectric resonator antenna. However, that we do have to take that difference into consideration when building the function. So uh, we're going to use the template files that are provided um, with the software in the documentation. These templates are going to provide us uh, ideas or functions and uh, various sort of solutions to the problems of, of how, for instance, we would get 10 and 11 gigahertz out of that file, um, how to build the objective function, and uh, lucky in this instance that um, the Yagi Uda antenna is one of the um, sort of used examples in the template files. So I can pretty much copy and paste the objective function across from the template, and I'll go through the, uh, the template and what it does now. So first thing, obviously, name the uh, objective uh, function. And again, it's, it's max um, uh, S11, so call it whatever you want. But I'm just going to call it max S power again, just like last time. 
And then we'll get our file again. This time I'm just going to show you a, uh, a template and I'll copy and uh, paste the template and then we'll make changes where it's required. So the templates will look something like this with a lot of comments. Um, there's uh, a lot of different ways of doing things. There is uh, explanations of various functions, how we'd use them, why we'd use them, um, what they are, and so on and so forth. The uh, thing to note really is that the this particular example is uh, a YUA, so we can go ahead and use this just as our template, with, maybe with a couple of changes. There are some important things to note from it that you may use in other objective functions. So we'll go through the, uh, the the building of the objective function using this template and and why we might use it. Why, um, for instance, these various sort of like omegas there and transpose the interp uh, function and stuff like that. So first, I just copy and paste it all in anyway. Okay, so uh, once we've copied and pasted that in, we just need to double check that we have all the information correct. And I can see there that um, obviously we changed the response name, um, the simulation response from the template. We, we didn't use the same one. Uh, I can also see that the uh, S11 is actually in a different index inside our response as well. So the first thing to do is just to make sure that we've got S11 uh, temporary in the correct, uh, sort of loading it from the correct place. So, and we can see here in the comments tells us where to get it from. So if this S11 temp is our D22 file, then we're going to need to get it from here, Simres1. Once that's done, um, we need to look at the, the next line, and we can see that we're creating a, a vector um, here, and it says the frequency range of the antenna is defined from 10 to 11 gigahertz using a step size of 10 megahertz. Well, the problem was defined as the antenna should be optimized between these frequencies, between 10 and between 11, and uh, the constraint was also between 10 and 11. So this, is, uh, this omega is our frequency range that we are looking at. Um, the reason why we're pulling this out will become apparent in a minute, but it's uh, because as we said when we looked at the file, we don't have 10, we don't have 11 gigahertz in the file. So what we'll do is we'll um, create a vector, and this vector is going to be from our the start of our optimization range to the end of our optimization range. And this middle bit is 10 E6, 10 megahertz, is going to be our step size. So every 10 megahertz, we're going to have um, an entry in this vector. Uh, the next thing that we do is we're going to uh, decide which units we're working in and the unit that we're going to work in is gigahertz because that's that's what we were told in the problem it was 10 to 11 gigahertz and uh, 10 e9 to 11 e9 is actually uh, this this omega is going to be in hertz so we'll uh, pull the frequency range out into a variable just so that we can turn all of our hertz vectors into gigahertz once we have our um, omega and we have our, our frequency unit as, as you remember s11 temp is going to be the whole file uh, the first column of the file is going to be frequency the second column is our data so we're going to pull out the first column here all of the rows the first column as our frequency so then we will have an omega frequency and we will have a frequency from our file and we'll be able to use these two things to match up and make a, a vector of data based on our actual frequencies that we want. Uh, I'll show you the file again and you'll see that. This column here is the frequency and we can see it's the frequency in, in hertz because we've got E09 on it and that second column there is our data. So that first column was our frequency and that second column was our data. So we now have frequency and we now have S11 and we have our requested, our required, sorry, uh, frequency there. Next, we are going to create a vector of all the values in our required frequency from this file even if they don't exactly exist so we had 10.004 and we had 9.996 
So we had something very close to 10, but we didn't have 10 gigahertz in the file. So using this um, function here, which is just copied from the template, so it can be used in other problems that experience the same issue where you're not finding 10 gigahertz, we can use it to find our Omega inside a file. It uses interpolation, so the the uh, start and end point have to exist within the bounds of the data. We can't go outside the bounds, but the bounds of the, this file were from much lower than 10 and much higher than 11, so we know that these exist inside that file. Uh, so what we're going to do first the, for the interpolation, we want to um, get our our actual frequency and then we want to turn it into gigahertz so that's our the frequency of the file in gigahertz and then that gives us our gigahertz to uh, S11 relationship there so S11 is the second column which was the actual data next we're going to do omega and turn that into gigahertz as well and this is saying that we want um, the data out where it corresponds to omega and that's what R is going to be. R is going to be our second column but only where it corresponds to where it's interpolated by this omega so that we will have a nice clean data set with R that the data starts at our interested frequency ends at the end of our interested frequency and is a, a step size of uh, 10 megahertz, which means that we know that we're polling at the correct frequencies. And we'll see that we'll be able to do this again in the constraints, because as you remember that gain was missing a lot of, of this, and we can use uh, a similar function, which I'll show you again when we do gain, um, to make sure that we have all of the uh, correct polling uh, frequencies to be able to work out our, in this instance, max R, and in the gain instance it will be our constraint. So once we've got R, we can just return exactly like we did with DRA. We're returning the maximum of S11. With uh, DRA, though, as you remember, we found our frequencies within the file and gave it an index. So we said from, I can't remember, so it's 200 to 400 um, that we had after our R, which was called S11. Here, though, we've already narrowed R down to our interested frequency by using interpolation so it's a trick that can be used when your starting and end point don't exactly exist within the file and you wonder where to start and where to end you know did we start at 9.96 instead or 10.004 you know where do we start where do we end well here we can start at 10 and we can end at 11 so we can solve the problem we've been given and not not approximate the problem um, and then because R is already our interested frequency, we don't need to pull out specific indexes of uh, R because it is already our S11 result at our interested frequencies. So once that's complete, you can save that and close it. And remember to save it in the software. So there's our max S par, which was um, copied from the template. Next we're going to look at this feature here, set constraints um, in parentheses design specifications. I mentioned it very briefly in the last video saying that it is very different to a geometrical constraint and I also mentioned earlier that because of our um, constraint being based on the simulation results we're going to have to make sure that we have our simulation results in our data set and in this instance the um, constraint was based on gain. So we put gain in our sim result in the data set and now I'm going to show you how we're going to use that um, gain file. Again we're going to need to interpolate obviously to, to build the, the correct size and the correct step size but once we have that we're going to be able to write a constraint which will satisfy the, um, the design specification. There's a couple of things to note in this screen that's uh, slightly different to the uh, objective function. The, uh, although this feature is similar to an objective function, that we are going to be building a function file which is going to satisfy our constraint, or, or rather give us some notion, give the uh, software some notion of how to satisfy that, that constraint. Um, first of all, obviously, we're going to have to name the function. 
and then we've got a penalty. This penalty is uh, essentially a coefficient that says how um, how dangerous it is or how bad it is if uh, for to violate this particular um, constraint. Obviously, you may have constraints which are only violated by tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, but even a small violation can be very, very bad for your design. So this penalty allows us to weight the uh, constraints to say that this constraint, you know, we really can't violate it even by a tiny, tiny amount, or, or this constraint obviously is, is less important somehow. So it's, it's a optimization sort of tool. If you aren't sure how to use this because there are the, there are um, other ways that this can be used to aid um, the, the optimization of a design um, rather than just as I said looking at, at weighting the constraints rather than just weighting them you can use this for other features as well which will be described in the user guide and, and how to set this up but for now we're just going to use automatic penalties which means that the uh, algorithm itself, the optimization itself, will choose a penalty based on um, a sort of an adaptive uh, method that's going to look at, at all of the constraints and uh, the objectives and uh, look at how they're violated and, and how important they might be. So if we click that, then we don't have to worry about this. We can just add our constraint and add as many as you like, and we can have auto penalties on them all. So the first thing to do is to pull out, well, we don't need D22, we needed that in the objective function. This time we need gain, which as we can see there is the second file in our simulation responses. Once we have gain, we're gonna to have to um, interpolate again to get a, um, a vector that's the same uh, detail as our D22 so that we have all of our points um, all of our frequency points mapped the same the same step size essentially as we use for D22 so it's uh, we're going to use Omega we're going to use the frequency from this file uh, again And again, we're going to look to, uh, as I said before, use the built-in MATLAB interpolation function just to give us from Omega, we want all of our gain from in this vector, the same as we had for D22. So there is our result. So that R there is going to be um, all of the gain values from 10 uh, gigahertz to 11 gigahertz, which did exist in the file, but the uh, step size was was very different so we, all we've done is we put that file in line with our uh, D22 results so that we have a, a vector of equal length and of equal detail to the D22 vector. To write the constraint as I said earlier it's going to be treated as less than or equal to zero so we're going to need to to write that as a violation so why is going to equal the violated amount of our uh, constraint and then subtract the mean of our gain. So I'll write that and then I'll go through it again. So here we have if, if the mean gain was 6 then this value would be zero and that would mean we have no violation because our specification is going to be less than or equal to zero so at zero there's going to be no violation of this constraint if the mean was five so that would be less than six that would be a violation because six minus five is obviously one so this this way of writing it means that we've got our violated amount being loaded into Y. So to look later when we see this, we're not going to see gain come out, we're going to see the violation of our constraint. And if the it was larger, then this is going to be a negative number. So if this is larger than 6, then Y is going to be a neg some negative number, which 
is the same as zero because it's less than or equal to zero. So either six or higher means that we have a, a non-violated constraint. Once that's done, we can save that, we can close that file. And remember to save here again. And uh, just a quick note again, we are using automatic penalties. You'll see there that if we had a penalty, it would be applied there. But we're using an automatic penalty. So we'll let the uh, algorithms figure out what, what we need that to be. So that's the only real um, difference from this problem to our uh, dielectric resonator antenna problem is that we had our violate oh sorry our constraint was not um, geometrical it was some uh, specification of the design output itself in this case gain and that's uh, going to be sort of handled in a different way than our geometrical constraints would be we can see uh, these now if we look at the sample verification we can see these outputs and see what they look like so I'm just going to do a quick batch test of one member again just a, a random member and then it'll pop up with our results um, here we can see this is the violation of gain um, not gain itself and this is our maximum s11 So next we're going to set the optimization algorithm. We're going to use um, the surrogate aware differential uh, evolution again and we're going to use the auto settings again. This time we can use PAS, we don't need ISS for this one uh, so we can, the, the modeling should be a bit quicker. So we can start the optimization process and what I'll do is I will speed this up or um, come back when we've actually started optimizing and we've got some, uh, some good value to talk about. We've been optimizing for a while now. We can see that um, after nearly 500 iterations, we're at a, a quite a, a low maximum uh, reflection here. The um, Results uh, here are the, uh, if you remember, the objective function and the constraint, but the constraint is expressed as a violation of that constraint and not the value used to, to gather that constraint. So this here just shows no violation, it's below zero, it, it won't be affecting this anymore. And I'll go through what, what that means in a minute with this, this convergence trend. We can see that negative 20 was reached very early on. Um, a very good result um, very early on and this uh, convergence trend obviously continue to drop population diversity is not at zero yet so there may still be uh, better designs this uh, remember that if from the last video if this isn't at zero there is uh, a possibility of a, of a better design existing this convergence trend this time is um, slightly different to the one that you saw on uh, dielectric resonator because this convergence trend is worked out based on what we call a penalized value or penalized objective. Because we have an objective and a, a constraint but the constraint is expressed as a, a violation of that constraint, we, um, we, we can penalize designs for breaching the constraint which means that the value that we're actually looking to minimize here is some combination of our maximum S11 and the violation of our gain, so any value below 6 um, for the amplitude of the gain. This uh, line here is that combination of those two, so it's the penalised value. So we started off with no um, violation, but you can see there that we did find a better design but with a very small violation on the constraint. And uh, for a while there, the best design did actually violate for a while. This is because we don't necessarily want to um, not use these designs. They may contain good features that we want to uh, bring into our final designs. Uh, but th this uh, way of optimizing means that we're going to end up with a good uh, convergence where 
penalised values. You know, if they do breach these these constraints that we've provided, they're going to be, you know, uh, higher up on the convergence trend. And then as we start to find the geometry where um, we have no uh, pe penalties, where we have no constraints, then we can start to see sort of good improvements and good gains. So once we're happy with the result, let's say negative 22, there's a very good result. So we can stop, look at this screen, and then I'm actually going to uh, simulate in CST so that I can see uh, more results. I can see the, the model in more detail. So when we've completed the, the simulation run, you'll see that the CST pops up with the plot and various other information about uh, our design. Um, so if there's any other processing that you want to do in, in CST, you have this project, uh, this project file to be able to use uh, and do any sort of processing, post-processing of the design that you want to do. So with those done and our um, project saved, we can come back to this later or we can see it, the results as a text file, we can see the design in, in CST if we want to, we can continue to optimise the same as uh, we showed you in the last video. Um, but uh, that's it for this video now on, on the Yagi Yura Antana. Thank you very much for watching.